Welcome to the Parenting Aces podcast brought to you by TennisBalls.com. We've got another great show for you this week featuring the Deco Turf National High School Tennis Team Championships in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And you are going to hear my interviews with a variety of folks up in Chattanooga. I had the pleasure of joining the tournament last week and spending a day there. And so I hope you enjoy this edition of Parenting Aces. I had the privilege of driving up to Chattanooga, Tennessee for the 2017 DecoTurf High School Tennis Team Championships and spending the day out at the Champions Club watching some boys and some girls teams compete and speaking with some of the players, some of the coaches, some of the parents, the sponsors, and the tournament director, Brandon Feisner, who is the mastermind behind this event, which is now celebrating its 10th year in existence. And this is a very unique event. It's a high school team event, but attracts teams from all over the U.S. And these kids come together, they compete as a team, they socialize with not only their own team members, but also with the kids from the other schools. And it's a great all-around event and opportunity for these high school students. Now that UTR has announced that it is including high school team results in its ratings, events like the Deco Turf High School Championships becomes even more important for tennis players who may not be on the USTA tournament circuit or the ITF tournament circuit, but are still talented players who may want to play college tennis and in the past haven't had a way to really be noticed by college coaches. So I'm thrilled to be able to bring you some interviews and give you a taste of this wonderful event in Chattanooga and our first uh, little snippet here is with the tournament creator Brandon Feisner. Enjoy. I'm with Brandon Feisner who is the creator and tournament director for the Deco Turf High School Tennis Team Championships and this is my second year to attend Brandon but it's not your second year. No, it, uh, this is our, our 10th uh, anniversary as a team event, um, the 11th year since the event was, uh, was first created. We had a, a small individual um, tournament the first year uh, that it was up in Louisville, but 10th year is a team tournament, which is uh, in high school tennis years is an eternity to, uh, to survive 10 years uh, as an event. So we're, we're excited to be where we're at and to make it to this milestone. That's fantastic. I'm standing with you up above the courts, and uh, there's a lot of action going on down there. We've got some boys' matches going on. Some girls look like they're warming up maybe or getting ready to start playing. Um, What's the energy like this year? It's been uh, been a lot of fun. We've... uh got I mean a ton of teams uh, 64 total from 13 states and just the excitement around the event I mean you get teams come in and this really is um, kind of the highlight of their season and to see them come in and, and have uh, this much excitement and stuff surrounding the event um, and to be up and, and excited about playing tennis at 8.30 in the morning takes a lot for a teenager. So anytime you can have smiles on their faces and, and have players on the courts and uh, everything going as planned, uh, it's, it's going very well. Fantastic. Y'all had your player party last night, and I know that's a big part of this event for the kids and also for you as a, as a tournament director, but kind of the mind behind the tournament that was a big piece of it was to provide something fun for these kids while they're here. Can you talk a little bit about how the party went last night and what you saw and what you heard? Yeah, the, the party was um, it went outstanding again. We've done it. This was our third year at uh, the Tennessee Aquarium here in Chattanooga, and just such outstanding hosts. We had over uh, 200 players, uh, coaches, and parents attend the event. Um, we had food. Uh, they did a underwater tennis dive show. Uh, we had... Um, 
a variety of animal encounters and interactions and stuff throughout the aquarium. And then uh, to kind of to cap the night off, we gave away a ton of prizes from some of our sponsors uh, at the event. Uh, we gave away everything from rackets from Dunlop to uh, a variety of prizes from USTA Tennessee. We gave away some total ser- uh, total serves by ServeMaster. Um, and then the kind of ultimate prize that everyone was waiting for was one coach last night. Um, Chris Mather from Trinity High School in Louisville walked away with four tickets to the U.S. Open, uh, courtesy of, of Deco Turf. Um, so it was just a fun night. I mean, the players had a great time. There's nothing like seeing. Uh, I tell everyone it's my favorite part of the, the whole event because the, the players get to be teenagers and get to have fun and get to be relaxed and don't have the pressure um, that they have the rest of the weekend. So you really get to see them kind of having fun, and, and that's that's what it's all about. That's kind of what gives me that drive to keep doing it. Fantastic. The sponsors play a huge role in, in the success of this event. And I, just from last year, you have additional sponsors that I didn't see on the banners last year. Can you talk a little bit about the challenge of getting sponsors and why tournament directors need to make that extra effort? It, uh, the sponsors have been a key in allowing us to do some of the extra things that we've been able to do at this event that um, would not be possible without them. Um, just to run run the event with the bare necessities already takes a significant budget. And then to do the extra things like provide extra gifts for the coaches and make sure the players have quality T-shirts and make sure that we can do events like the players' party and things like that. That's what having those sponsors allows us to do that and take the tournament kind of to that extra level that we wouldn't be able to do without them. Um, and w- we've gotten such great support from our sponsors. Um, to have Deco Turf with us for as many years um, as they have been. I, I want to say this is now the sixth year um, with them, and to have Icy Hot on board for their third year. Um, not only does does it, it help us with the, the financial support and stuff that they provide, but to be associated with names of, of those quality national brands and stuff um, really helps provide that, that tournament with that stable foundation and stuff. And, uh, I mean, the list is, is extraordinary um, of all the sponsors that we have. Coca-Cola and, and Papa John's help us with the players' party, um, Competition Athletic Services, which is local here in Chattanooga, um, our sponsor of ours, of course, We've got Deco Turf and Icy Hot. Um, Dunlop Sports is a is a good sponsor of ours and partner of ours. Uh, Rebounces, who does uh, the green tennis machines to repressurize balls, they stepped in this year and, and returned as a sponsor for the first time in a few years. So to have some of those companies. Um, come back that have sponsored in the past and stuff and things like that that kind of shows the the value of the event and um the importance of of them the importance of this demographic with them um because this is the future of of tennis throughout the country is is all these high school players that are out on the court and to get the the brands and stuff in front of them is is really important and and a valuable asset uh, both for the companies and then for the event to partner with them sure sure UTR just announced that they are making a big push to incorporate high school tennis results in the ratings. Can you share how that impacts an event such as this? Are the kids talking about that? Are the coaches talking about that at all? I know we've uh, we've been fortunate that we've kind of partnered with um, with UTR for the last two years um, and used them exclusively in the uh, seeding of our event and stuff. So it's been uh, it's been really interesting to see kind of the growth of UTR over two years and now to see where we're to that level that it's almost at that tipping point. They're finally announcing a lot of these big changes with the high school um, game and stuff and incorporating the scores and it's really going to make a huge difference in. Uh, um, kind of leveling the playing field throughout the country and, and finding that those competitive matches and stuff that it was more difficult to find and to see where when you come into an event like this it's so difficult to seed and to get everyone where they need to be because there's not other than UTR there's no common denominator when you have teams from 13 different states you can't go by sectional rankings you can't necessarily go by national rankings because not every player that plays high school tennis plays national level events 
Um, so there's no other than UTR. There's no uh, no common denominator there amongst all the players. And when UTR come along and we started to, to be able to use that for our seating, the event got a lot more competitively balanced, both um, amongst splitting the teams into divisions and in the, the matchups in the tournament. Um, so to add to add high school matches and stuff to UTR is going to be a huge benefit in this country because it's going to bring um, – it's going to give players that may or may not play tournament tennis and stuff still still give them that option to have a rating and to see where they compare to other players and to get those results from the three three high school matches a week and stuff that they play to get those results in front of college coaches and stuff that those college coaches may never see otherwise um and some of those results for some of these kids may be the biggest matches of their whole lives so to to be able to get that and incorporate it into a system um as big as as what utr has grown into is going to be a huge uh, a huge jump for the high school tennis uh, throughout the country i agree and i think it's fantastic for a lot of these kids who you know may not have even thought about playing college tennis now all of a sudden maybe college tennis is on their radar yeah it's and that's going to be the biggest key is you're going to have so many of these players that are that are very good tennis players but just don't have whether it be they don't have the means to play um competitive junior tennis on like the usta circuit and stuff or whether it be that uh, maybe they're a multi-sport athlete and the rest of the year they're focusing on their other sport but they're still a very good tennis player and nobody really knows anything about who they are because everything has always been based off of, of strictly USTA rankings and stuff. And to, to be able to, to add that value to the matches, to make them really mean something um, on a day-to-day basis is going to be, is just going to change change the game completely. I'm really excited about it. That's cool. Let's talk a little bit about what 2018 holds for this event. Um, if you'd have asked me, Four weeks ago, what 2018 was going to look like, I'd have told you that I don't know. I uh, don't know for sure what what the future was going to be. It was a little cloudy, um, just in terms of the the planning of this event is a major undertaking. I mean, most people don't realize that that an event this size takes 11, 12 months of planning. I mean, I literally will end this tournament um, when we pack up on Saturday or on Sunday to leave, and by a week from now I'll already be making plans and stuff for for next year's event um so there was a lot of kind of question marks about what we were going to do and and some of the things that we've talked about and and I'm in discussion with with the committee and things about hopefully is what we can do to um both keep the event a manageable size and find ways to expand uh, the the brand and the offering to where more teams can still be a part of it. So we've looked at the possibility of expanding to um, pulling this event itself back to like a 48 teams, but expanding and doing two or three other smaller, similar tournaments um, kind of throughout the, the country and stuff that would allow us to continue to bring this level of tournament to teams throughout the country, because that's ultimately the goal is we want as many teams as possible involved, but we want it to be a good quality weekend where those teams can come in and have have fun and, and get their matches in regardless of what weather and anything else is going to do to where with 64 teams if weather doesn't cooperate it becomes kind of a nightmare yeah for sure <laughs> for sure well that's cool i i feel your pain because uh i'm in the process of expanding my little tournament from one to four for 2017 and oh it's lots of headaches but i think we'll all be worth it in the end uh, so Anything else you want to share with us about this event, what it means to you, and why schools need to reach out to you to get involved for next year? Uh, well, what I was going to do, I want to share a quote, and I'm, I'm pulling it up right now, that a coach sent me this weekend. And I think that this was um, – this really, like I said, a, a month ago I was kind of unsure as to what um, – what was going to go on with the future of the event and a coach recently uh sent me a message and and it talked about how the the tournament has grown in a tremendous way and and he said the real benefit uh that the kids will remember though is getting to be with their peers seeing old friends meeting new friends and some of those friendships will mold into lifelong relationships and he said now that is doing something significant in their lives and when you when you see a coach and and they can put it in to terms like that that's when all the late nights that you're up till one in the morning trying to plan and all the headaches that you have on everything they're all worth it because um it when you know that it means that much to the players uh 
the headache is is nothing. I mean, it's just a little bleep on the radar that that doesn't uh, do anything. So I think that's the the biggest thing is knowing that um, that an event like this really does have that kind of impact um, is what keeps that that drive alive to keep doing it and to keep making it bigger and better and finding new and innovative ways um, to to do things to where. Um, I mean, on a normal day-to-day basis, it, it's easy to kind of get caught up in those tasks of, oh, this week I've got to order shirts, and oh, this week I've got to order programs. And um, I think that, that that's the key, too, that, that makes an event special. And, and to everyone out there that's kind of contemplating running events and, and are currently running events and stuff, just try to find unique and innovative ways to make your tournament a little bit different than everything else and that's what is the key to having a tournament that the players are going to remember the parents are going to remember um, and people are going to want to keep coming back to um, because it used to be that that we would be filling this tournament I mean I'd still be in January looking for teams and uh, I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do are we going to expand are we going to do this are we going to do that and this year we had 64 teams in October and I had to turn away teams wow. um, so when it gets to that level that's when you're kind of like wow this this really has gotten gotten there so just look for that little edge of what what you can do to make your event different and stuff and that's what's allowed us to take this from a five-team individual tournament um in south louisville that that i still laugh when i think (laughs) think back at um and grow it to what is 64 teams from 13 states and i mean the quality of tennis it's like being at at a college tournament almost it's insane the level of play that that you'll see throughout the weekend for sure. I'm, I'm standing up here watching uh, some boys doubles going on and uh, I, I can tell you having just returned from a college tennis week that uh, the quality out here is very high level and very impressive. So for those who want to get in touch with you about participating in next year's event, what's the best way to find you? Uh, We invite you to go to the uh, tournament website, and there's a Contact Us button on the tournament website, um, and you can communicate with me that way. You can also reach me just by email at hs tennis championships at gmail.com um, and if you check the website in about i would say about a month so sometime around um late april or so we will put up a link that will say um like tournament or participation in participation interest form um for 2018 and that allows you to kind of fill out a form gives us all the information that we need to know about your team um so that we can kind of go through the selection process and we certainly encourage people throughout the country to be a part of this um whether you're a big school or a small school um, because like I said our, our goal in the future is to find ways to to expand and, and get to more people in, in various ways and to know who wants to be a part of it that lets us know where we need to go um, so anybody that's interested in being a part of it uh, we certainly invite you to, to fill that out and, and so that we can get a better feel on where we need to go in the future. Give us your website address The website is hstennischampionships.com Okay, perfect. And one last question uh, that something you just said made me think of this. You do have teams that have traveled from quite a distance to participate, and these are high schools. How are they funding these trips? What are you hearing from the coaches and the parents about how they paid to get here? We have a lot of teams that do, I mean, do a ton of fundraisers. And I've heard, I mean, uh, I think I've heard every kind of fundraiser imaginable, whether it was selling laundry detergent or car washes or whatever it, it may be. Um, some of it is, um, some of it is kind of financed through the schools and athletic budgets. Some of it is kind of uh, covered solely by the parents splitting the cost of the trips. And that's what's so interesting about this is you've got that you've got that great mix of, of public schools and private schools. You've got that great mix of schools from kind of affluent uh, more upscale areas and you've got schools that are not from those affluent areas you've got you've got this great mix of players and teams and schools that you don't normally get um, anywhere else and that's what that's what makes this such a unique uh, event well it speaks very highly of this event that teams are willing to go to that kind of uh, effort to get the kids here and playing and congratulations to you on another successful year and I'm looking forward to spending the day with you guys. Awesome. We're looking forward to having you here and uh, thank you for, for coming up and being a part of it. 
as I mentioned earlier, I had the opportunity to speak with one of the sponsors of the event, Icy Hot. So here is my interview with Robert Long, who not only represents Icy Hot here, but is also the parent of one of the players. I'm here with Robert Long at the Deco Turf High School Tennis Team Championships, and Robert is with Icy Hot, which is one of the main sponsors of this event. And Robert, I'd love to get your your perspective on this event versus some of the other junior tennis events that Icy Hot participates in. Well, the special thing about this event uh, for us is it's a it's a high school event, and so it's a team centered event. And for many junior players, it's, it's an individual event most of the time. And so to be able to participate in a national level tournament with their teammates and playing for their school and their community, it's just been a difference maker. And it just, it's something different for the kids. They really enjoy it. Uh, it's special for my son to get to play with his teammates in such an event. And certain kids that don't participate in USTA at, at a level uh, may not ever get to participate against certain schools at a certain level like this and so it's just uh it's something different it's a lot of fun for the the kids in the school what does it mean for icy hot to be involved in tennis at this level i know y'all sponsor some high level usta tournaments around the country and this is something different for y'all it is um icy hot is uh about pain pain management and anyone that's been in and around tennis for a certain amount of time understand that's part of the game and uh, to uh, have the brand associated with athletes and athletic events is something that we try to consistently participate in, and it's just uh, helpful for the brand, but it also means something for the for the athletes too. Absolutely, and you mentioned your son's playing in this event too, so you're here not only as a sponsor but also as a tennis parent, which. That's what we cater to at Parenting Aces. So can you talk a little bit about how it is for you watching your son participate in an event such as this versus being at an individual tournament, which I'm sure you have lots of experience at? It's uh, It goes back to the, the school aspect and playing for the school. Um, he's a senior, so this is our last go around at this level. And uh, it's just fun to see him have teammates cheer him on versus just a parent a parent or two or a friend or two in the stands at the USTA stuff. So, again, it's just different with the team atmosphere, and it's just uh, a different uh, aspect but a lot of fun. Great. What's next for your son? He has committed to play at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga, so he will uh, graduate high school and then move on to uh, UTC and continue his tennis and education. Fantastic. Well, best of luck to him and to his team. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Brandon Jones is the referee for this tournament, and he is also an official at junior tournaments, college tournaments, and professional events. And here is his take on what it means to be at this high school team event. I'm speaking with Brandon Jones, who is the tournament referee for the Deco Turf High School Tennis Team Championships. Brandon, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thank you. So tell me what it means to be a referee of a high school team event like this. Uh, it was a great privilege. I'm actually a high school tennis coach myself. Um, I'm a teaching pro. I'm a ITA official, USDA official. So it's great to see uh, all the teams out here and uh, the sportsmanship that I've seen so far. Um, you know, it's just it's a great experience. It's fascinating. Are you kind of having to create the rules as you go? Because this is a pretty unique event, right? Uh, not really. Brandon and I have actually talked. We've kind of got a, a blend of uh, USTA rules and ITA rules. So we've got some things set in stone that obviously makes it easier to fall back on. So, How does refereeing an event with high school teams differ from refereeing a college event? Uh, high school is a little bit quieter so far. Uh, some of the college matches I've done are a little bit rowdy. Uh, of course, they can do that, I guess, where high school kids are not uh, maybe aware that they can push the boundaries to some degree. But uh, other than that, it's roughly about the same. Scoring is a little bit different as far as the team scoring, um, but really probably just the overall atmosphere. Do you want to talk a little bit about the scoring and how it differs? Well, again, we're doing kind of a mesh of uh, USTA and ITA. So uh, the teams this weekend are playing a uh, seven-point match. So six singles, three doubles, but the three doubles actually count as a one team point. So you score it on the seven. Um, Eight-game pro set for uh, doubles. 
where if you're doing like D1 tennis, it would just be a six-game set. And then they do a clinch in uh, Division One tennis where here they play all three out. So. And are they playing regular scoring or no ad? Uh, we're doing no ad scoring. That's kind of the common theme for most of the uh, southern states it is. Uh, singles is best two out of three with a 10-pointer for the third set. Excellent. And how are the kids, especially the ones not used to playing that no ad scoring, are you hearing any kind of confusion or any kind of feedback on that? So far, so good. Most of the kids seem to be uh, familiar with it. I've heard some kids from like South Carolina and Louisiana, and that's one of those things. And to be honest, USTA, uh, if you do get rain in an event, that seems to be what a tournament director does first, is go to no ad scoring, especially in the back draw. So I think they're pretty used to it. Great. What are you seeing in terms of the difference of being at a team event versus being at an individual event for the juniors? Obviously, you're used to the college team events, but for the juniors, we don't have a whole lot of events like this. Uh, yes, you've obviously got a lot more cheering going on because obviously you're, you're traveling with uh, uh, either six boys or six girls on a team. So uh, that's nice. Um, coaching, which is great. Obviously, you don't see that in USDA tournaments. But, uh, yeah, just a lot of good team bonding, uh, team support, um, which I can actually hear a court going on back in the background. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a little bit different experience compared to, like, a USDA junior tournament. Great. Thanks so much. So you live in this area, I guess? Or? Now let's hear from some of the players. I'm with Anna Stout, who is a player for the Web School. And, Anna, thanks for talking with me. Thanks. What year are you? I am going to graduate in 2020. Awesome. So is this your first time to come to this tournament? Yes, it is. And how is this tournament different from other high school team events you've been to? Um, it's very competitive, and there's a lot more um, uh, teams and players. So that's how it's different, yeah. Did you go to the party last night? No, I didn't. Oh, too bad. I heard it was really fun. Um, do you play individual tennis tournaments as well? Yes, I do. So can you compare this to, for example, a USTA tournament? Um, a USTA tournament, you don't have as many people cheering you on or you don't know as many people as a high school team tournament. So, yeah. Do you like that aspect? Um, it's good in some ways, like when you're losing and they can cheer you on, but when you're just by yourself, then you have to be the one to like motivate yourself. So, yeah. Interesting. Do you have plans to play tennis after high school? Yes, I do. I really want to play when I'm in college. And any colleges on your radar yet? No, not really. I guess it's early. You've got a few years. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for talking with us. Thank you. I'm with a group of players from Catholic High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Guys, thanks for chatting with me. Thank you. Hey. Good to be here. Awesome. So do any of you guys also play USTA tournaments in addition to this? All of you? Most of you? Yes, all of us. All of you? Can you talk a little bit about how this event is different from the individual tournaments that you played with USTA or any of the other tennis organizations? Well, this is like a team v. team, and um, it's more like a college format. And, uh, yeah, It's a lot less pressure on you. You can cheer other uh, proponents during the match. So it's your teammates. Yeah. It's really fun. It's a lot more fun than USTA. What do you all think about the no-ad scoring? A lot, it's a lot more uh, pressure yeah. on the deuce points. Challenging. It is. That's, that's the only issue. The no, I, it's a good I, issue or a bad issue? Like it's a good thing, but I, I don't know. I just don't. I don't like it that much. Yeah. But it's all right. It's fun. Are any of you guys planning to play college tennis? No, I am. You are. Division one. Okay. Where? Where do you want to go? Um, I'm not sure yet. Okay. What year are you? I'm a junior. Okay. So, how do you feel like this is going to prepare you for college tennis? Um, I mean, this because, is the same format, yeah, right? Because it's a team format, you get to uh, get stronger bonds with a lot of guys and teammates uh, compared to just kind of playing for yourself. You're playing for a team in your school. It's not. It's it's a lot. It's not as. I don't want to say USDA <laughs> individual is selfish, but I guess compared to a team setting, it's just it's very different. Do you feel like it's adva- advantageous for you to get to play no ad scoring in this format as a high school junior in preparation for college? Definitely. It. I mean. I, I've always done pretty decent with ad scoring. I don't mind it that much. I know a lot of people don't like it, but 
uh, I enjoy playing it. Just it makes the matches go a lot faster. So quick. that's for sure. Did any of you guys go to the party last night? No, 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 no. Uh, y'all weren't here in time, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, like I'm um, dying to meet somebody who's who went to the party because I kept hearing about the party at the aquarium. But uh, <laughs> I'll have to keep asking. So, um, what's your favorite part about this tournament? One thing, if you could pick. Team atmosphere. Yeah, the team aspect of it. Cheering your teammates on. I've played at this facility a lot. I like the facility. It's really nice. Good. The weather's nice. <laughs> that is true. It finally warmed up and the sun came out. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, you guys, for chatting with me. Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell, this is a great event for not only the players, but also the parents, the coaches, the organizers, the sponsors. It's just a fun way for these high school kids to get together with their school teammates and play in a team setting. It's also a great taste of what's to come for the ones headed to college to play at that level and to have an experience playing no ad scoring and playing the the team format. I'm so excited that I get to be part of this and I'm so appreciative to Brandon and his wife Nikki for including Parenting Aces in this phenomenal event and I hope you guys have enjoyed hearing a little bit about it. That's it for this episode of Parenting Aces. We'll catch you next week. Have a great week, everybody. I'm Lisa Stone, and you've been listening to Parenting Aces. If you like what you've heard, please review us and rate us on iTunes. Thank you, as always, to our sponsor, TennisBalls.com.